Let's talk about cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is holding two contradicting beliefs, ideas, or thoughts at the same time. Your beliefs and your desires conflict. So you, you, you say, but I love them. Oh, and they're this horrible person. I don't even really like them. And that's going on for you at the same exact time. Super confusing, keeps you stuck in those trauma bonded states and keeps you in connection and in contact with a toxic person. It will literally keep you locked down in emotional and behavioral patterns because you don't know which part of your yourself, your mind, your beliefs, your feelings to believe. You don't know which one's right. The pull is so strong in the emotional and the logic is so clear that you're completely conflicted. Your actions start going against what you know, what you believe, what you feel. You are basically invalidating yourself through the experience of the actions you take when you're in a state of cognitive dissonance, super frustrating. And you have, there's a lot of feelings of uh, like a difficult feeling of discomfort because of this conflict that's going on inside of you. So what creates this is the pattern of the love bomb and the devaluing and intermittent reinforcement. If you have somebody love bombing you, even if it's just a little bit or just being normal, right? Being like a normal person in a relationship and then devaluing you. And it happens at intermittent times at intervals that can't be predicted, can be predicted, can't be predicted both at the same time. If the, the level of reward, so to speak, of the, of the positive is in different places. So it's not always like super great and super bad. It's Sometimes it's a little good, sometimes it's really good. And then it, you know, it's super intermittent. It's all mixed up. Your mind gets confused. Your emotions get confused. It creates cognitive dissonance in the brain of the person who's receiving this sort of treatment. The gaslighting, the gaslighting that the narcissistic person or the toxic person will do reinforces all of the confusion that you have in your head. You're also being programmed and conditioned to believe that much of what's going on in the relationship or friendship or whatever is your fault when it's not your fault, when it's the other person's inability to have a healthy, normal, adult, emotional relationship that includes both people and has empathy flowing both directions. We're expecting that. We're hoping for that. We're thinking that's real. And what's actually happening is a gaslighting toxic person is manipulating things for their own gain and you end up confused and conflicted about what actually happened and where your part in it is so when you're feeling this cognitive dissonance when you're feeling trauma bonded look for what you know was real look for what you can see the patterns of that were actual facts and things that happened in the relationship and write that stuff down okay have a list of for yourself of the realities of what you just lived through or what you're living through so that you can keep that logic side that side that's understanding the side that's seeing truth kind of in the forefront of your mind instead of listening to oh but you know, that the pulling of the emotions that are saying the opposite. We can't listen to our emotions when we're in a state of cognitive dissonance. What we listen to is our gut. You're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I love them so much. I want them. I miss them. I'm going to call them. And then in your gut, most likely you're going to feel first relief from talking to them because that's what happens when you're trauma bonded. And then a pit or, or anxiety or stress from the continued communication with the toxic person because you know what is right for you and it is not that you know that this person is going to turn on you they're going to hurt you if they're not continually doing it at the moment right so look for the facts look for the truths write them down when you're trying to be no contact and you're feeling cognitive dissonance look think about what you need think about what you're requiring and start giving it to yourself start finding it in ways that don't involve other people or especially toxic people you can lean on friends you can find a coach or a therapist, you can do things like that to help you process and to help you um, validate, help feel validated, understand what's going on with you. But there's little things in life that you might be seeking from the other person, connection, communication, love. Go pet an animal if you need love, right? Go take a walk, go do things that for yourself on your own or with things that will not harm you right don't reach back to a toxic person because it's going to be more of the same talk about it 
it is so normal to need to talk about this, to need to process it with someone and have a conversation or two or three or four or many to work your way through this part. Journal out those conflicting thoughts and just look at it and think, wow, okay, I am not in a clear space to make any decisions, so I won't. Does that make sense? List the toxic things the person did in one location, a giant list. My guess is most of you can make giant lists, right? And even if you only used one word to describe it, the list would go on and on. So list it out so that you can see very clearly that you should not be turning to that person to meet any needs of yours, to meet any anything for you, okay? Have a gratitude journal as well so that you're not just spinning your wheels on the negative, all right? that can help you stay more balanced. One thing I saw said that extroverted activities help people heal from traumas faster. So find things that include the world around you. It doesn't have to be a party or a social event. It can be just being out in the world, go you know, ride your bike where other people are riding their bikes, go anything, right? Just something where there's other humans around, where there's interactions that can take place, where you're involved in something in the world it helps people move through these traumas quicker. And then acceptance of self, allowance of self. You know what, you guys, yeah, you didn't see the red flag soon enough. Okay, and now you do, and now you're going to heal, and now you're going to move past this person. Okay, so you, quote, let yourself be treated this way. Nobody lets themselves be treated in a terrible way because it's not a let. What it is is you've been groomed, you've been manipulated, you have been then trauma bonded to someone that is harmful. That's not letting. What that it was was, yes, it's letting, but it's not like I want it, right? It's you, it takes the time that it takes you to see it, to see it. And then it takes the time that it takes you to get out of it, to get out of it. And sometimes that can be many, many years. Sometimes it's quick. Stop judging yourself. The self-judgment, I've said this over and over, is what's helping you stick in place. Allow yourself to have made mistakes. Allow yourself to have been fooled by a toxic person. That's what they do. They're manipulators. Of course you were fooled by them. So that's what I've got on cognitive dissonance today. If you have any questions or if you're experiencing this, what do you need to know? What are you feeling? What are you going through? Let me know in the comments. And I will talk to you guys next time. My name is Lise Colucci. And any information about me about coaching or group coaching can be found in the description of every video. Otherwise, hit subscribe and the thumbs up. And I will talk to you guys later. Take care.